Okay, I understand. I apologize for that, man. I was trying to, I don't know, like last couple of times we, we didn't really connect. So I was thinking maybe if I don't hear from you, then maybe it's canceled or you had something going on. But next time I'll be prepared yeah. for sure. If we can okay, good. agree on the time, I'll be I'll be there and ready to go. We'll agree on uh, one once a week time and uh, day. Mm -hmm. And we're going to really commit on that day and time, okay? Sure, that's fair. All right. So here, th these are the things that, uh, or strategies that I'm going to, this is the first part. There are three books in this chess strategy. So we're going to look at the strategy and then um, remember it, understand it, and then analyze a game so that you can apply it in a real game. Then I'm going to, of course, ask you from time to time, what is your understanding? What is your plan? Uh, what is your variation and so on? Okay. Okay. So we, we'll start first with the struggle in the center, which is the the most common. You know what what's the center, right? So I don't have to elaborate on the the center because you know what the center is and the importance of the center. Am I right? Yes. You you've been playing chess. Okay. Let's analyze your game. Okay. You see the board. Mm -hmm. Okay. So e four, e five. Knight f3 and knight c6. I think this is basic chess opening. You see this in chess clubs, right? Yes. Uh, knight c6 for me is the best way to defend the pawn on the e5. But this is not the only move. Of course, you can play the Philidor, which is d6. Uh, you can also play knight f6, which is the, the Petrov defense. Uh, these are my, my two choices. When I'm playing e5, I studied these two variations as black. Because this is, uh, for me, even computers agree that this is the, the most solid way of meeting e4. It's an easy way to equalize the game. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because we're creating a symmetrical pawn formation. Don't forget, when there is symmetry or equilibrium in a chess game, it's easy to get a draw, right? Mm -hmm. okay. If there's what you call imbalances, that is uh, very difficult because you need to understand what are the imbalances that favors you, what are the imbalances that favors your opponent. The more imbalances that favors you, the better your game is. So you always count how many imbalances that, that, that is on my favor. And mm -hmm. what about my opponent? You understand? Yes. Okay. So here, there is an imbalance right away. The developed knight, right? Mm -hmm. Queen side versus king side. Meaning, black and, uh, white and castle king side and can attack the, the center right away because his king is uh, safe. See, you can play castling in two moves and you can play d4, right? Mm -hmm. So you can speed up your, your development and make a break in the center. Why do you need to make a break? Well, you have to create an imbalance if you're white. You're playing for a win if you're white, right? Right. And black is trying to play solid game, a balanced game. Don't forget, when you're playing black, uh, especially against uh, strong play, stronger players, play for a solid opening, play for a solid line, get a draw that is good for you. You win half of the point. And white loses half of the point. You understand? Mm, yes. Okay, because white, white has to prove that he has the advantage of the first move. So bishop c4, bishop c5, and then here you can play the move c3. Have you played this opening before? A long, long time ago. Like okay. 15, 20 years ago almost, yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is the Ponziani. And you know what is the main idea of white? Uh, White's going to sacrifice maybe one pawn or something to get a quick development in the center and castle immediately, right? Like, like which pawn? The pawn on d4? It's, it's, you know, if white plays this, he's not going to sacrifice the pawn, right? Ah, uh, okay. Um... Right? He's going to play d4. Capture, capture, and then the pawn is properly defended by two pieces. Right, yeah. He's just trying now, to... Yeah. If you're black, what is the best way to answer this uh, d4 threat? White is preparing for d4, <clears throat> meaning he's trying to play d4 in his next move. How do you answer this idea? Uh, maybe d5? d5, sacrificing a pawn? <laughs> Yucks. <laughs> d5, you give up. Rafi, what are you doing? <laughs> I mean, I thought that one of the ideas here was to play d5 just to get a quick tempo back. Yeah, but you're, you're sacrificing a pawn. Did White make a mistake in his opening? You you all only, you know, usually it's uh, White to place gambit lines, right? But there are, of, of course, black gambit lines in the opening. Okay, but so if it's not d5, then it's definitely knight f6. 
Okay, why? Because we're counter-attacking E4 right away. And we're developing pieces. And we're developing pieces. Why to play D4, capture, capture, there is an E file that will be open if you can castle early much better, right? Yeah. And White also will castle early. So you, you try to race. Uh, who can castle first can always uh, make attacking moves in the middle, can always open up lines. You understand? Mm -hmm. So White can castle, you have to play uh, Knight F6. Also, if you calculate this one, Knight F6, let's say D4. What will you play if you're black? Okay, let, let's flip the board here so that you can uh, maybe compute easily the board and then what will you play if you're black? You know, white has two threats. White has uh, first two ideas here. First one, drive the, your bishop away. Second, if you capture on d4, he will push the pawn to e5, e5 yeah. and he will attack your knight. Yes. Uh... That's why before you play knight f6, you should have analyzed. What if I play knight f6 and he plays d4? What is my line? Mm -hmm. What will happen? What will I do if he plays d4? Mm -hmm. Understand? You, you cannot play knight f6 without computing uh, the, the move d4. Oh, this is the line now. After d4, capture. If white captures this one, you have to give a check if you're black. If bishop d2, you can take on d2, knight takes d2, and then you can play the move d5. Mm. Pawn takes, you can take with your knight. There's an isolated pawn, few pieces are exchanged. This is good for black. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Alright. Let's go to the, the other line. What if he plays e5? That's why before you really play knight and f6, you have to understand that if you take on d4, he will play e5. If you're not prepared against this move, then you will have problems. So another thing that you must learn is anticipating uh, the next moves that your opponent will be playing. How do you anticipate? Well, you have to understand his general plan of action. Like, what pawn breaks is he going to make? What pawn formation? Where to put his pieces? So you can anticipate threats in advance. Mm. Why? Because if the threats are already there, like five threats, and you have only one move to play, do you think you can defend everything? You cannot, right? Mm -hmm. Even defending against two threats is very hard. Okay, what is White's idea? Well, he wants Black to move his knight and play a cramp game, right? Right. What, what will you play? So if that is the case, then you must not play this this line. You have to avoid uh, getting a cramp position. Why is your position cramp? Because your your bishop, I mean, your your pawn on d seven plus your bishop cannot get out. Right. Yes. Which means that the best answer to e five is a counter attack. Uh, also in the side. So d five, right? E five. Okay. Mm -hmm. D five. See, understanding what's happening on the board. If you're having a problem with this attack, then look for a counterplay. Mm -hmm. But don't ever forget that we're still in the opening stage here and we need to develop the pieces. But this one needs to be computed. You know why? After he takes f6, capture on c4, takes g7. It seems black's king is not safe here, right? Right. Okay. But white center also collapsed. The pawns are gone in the middle. So you can play her queen to d5, bishop e6. Castling to inside. So if he, if he plays bishop a6, then you can play bishop e6. You can also play queen to e5, queen f6. These are the moves that you can play, mm -hmm. which are very solid, very strong. Okay. Levy, can you give me one minute? I'm gonna plug in my laptop and charger. One second. Okay. 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 Just one second.
Okay, sorry, I'm back. Okay, now let's see what happened in the game. So here, instead of playing knight f6 to speed up his development and to counter attack in the center, Black made a move, a, a passive move for me, which is d6. Hmm. Now, of course, White now can freely play his pawn move to d4 without problems, right? Right. Because Black's play did not give White problems, you understand? Yes, right. So just yeah. right. move d4, capture on d4, C takes d4, and then bishop to b6. See, no problem whatsoever. Yeah. Okay? Alright, so here, what's happening? You have to make a new evaluation. What's going on? If you're white. So you have to know what's happening on, on the center. And then what will be black set up? You know? Right. The speed test is pawn formation. I want you to, to give me your own evaluation, your own analysis here. And then what is your plan if you're white? And that, that one includes the, the threats of your opponent that he'll be making a few moves later. Okay? Mm hmm So, white... Okay, let's begin first with the center. The center is the four squares in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. Who controls the center? White, white or black? White. White, because of these two connected pawns. So we call this connected pawns. Mm -hmm. And usually this is the aim of every player to have two or three pawns on the fourth row. Okay? Mm -hmm. You don't move them unless you're forced to move one of the pawns. Mm -hmm. Just maintain this structure because it will give you more space. Mm. Okay. Now, don't forget, if you have pawns in the middle like this, the fourth rank, they can also become targets. They can be easily attacked by enemy pawns and pieces. You have to remember this. Right. Last black task here is at some point, he might capture this one or he might play d5. So meaning you must expect that there's knight here, right? Knight f6, there's a pawn move to d5 that he can play. What else? Um... There's pressure on d4. What's the defender of the d4? Pawn, it's the knight. So you must also expect bishop g4. Yeah. It's important that you can anticipate these moves and you can prepare your, your, uh, your, what you call this, your line against bishop g4 and knight f6. Okay, here, what will you play if you're white? Uh, I'd probably... I would probably just castle, honestly, and get my rook activated, king to safety, and get a defender for e4. And yeah, okay, make... castling is good. Castling is good, okay? Mm -hmm. Castling is one of the best moves here. Knight c3 is also one of the best moves. So you have really two lines to play, either knight, FC, uh, knight c3 or castling king side. Mm, okay, black yeah. plays knight f6, white <clears throat> castles, black castles, and what will you play if you're white? Probably bishop g5, developing another piece, pinning the knight from attacking the center. And that maybe, or maybe I would even consider h3 to keep that bishop on uh, c8 from developing in a nice square easily. These moves that you are thinking, they're called candidate moves. You don't know first what's the result, result of these moves, right? Because it's only a move, it's not a line. And in order to make it a line, you have to think, what will be your opponent's ideas also? So your move, then you think, what are the threats that your opponent might be making and you do not notice them? Understand? Yeah. So before you play, ask yourself, if I am black, what would I play? So black's threat is to take on e4 and then play d5. Yeah. And then you see, here, here you want to play h3, right? You play knight takes. And then you will play d5. See? That's yeah. the thing. You have to notice the threats. And if you play bishop g5, what do you think black will play? Probably h6. h6. To force you to take, right? Yeah. So what if you take? You you give up your the bishop pair, right? Now ask yourself, is this a good line for me? Bishop g5 and h6, bishop takes f6, queen takes f6. Knight d5, queen d8, and so on. What do you think of this line? Is this okay? Uh, 
Uh, it might be okay because White still is gonna maintain quite a strong center. He's gonna win the bishop on b6 at least to equalize the bishop pair, and then his bishop on c, you know, the c uh, on c4 is decent. Okay. But I mean, I don't know if it's necessarily an advantage for White. I bet White will be fine after that. I think. Okay. If I'm going to play bishop g5 and my opponent will force will force me to give up the bishop pair, I will not play it. Okay, his main move is knight e4. That is the main threat, right? So I can just move my bishop away. My bishop on c4 is also a bit hanging. I'm going to play bishop b3. If he plays bishop g4, okay, sorry, sorry. If he plays bishop g4, I have also an answer to this one. And it's a developing move. What will you play? He's threatening uh, to take the ball. Yeah, so... I guess bishop e3, right? Bishop e3. What if he takes your knight? Um, I'll take back with the pawn. Yeah, you take it with the pawn. That's also what my analysis is all about. I take with the pawn. King goes to h1, rook to g1, queen d2, rook g3, or rook g2, rook a2. A see, this is what I'm doing when I'm playing chess. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see what's the threat of my opponent and trying to see what's the benefit if my I will allow my opponent to play his moves. Mm -hmm. What benefits, what, what changes will happen and what benefits will I get? What What's the weakness? So the weakness here is uh, the pawn on f3 plus the pawn on h2, right? Mm -hmm. I can then double, but the, I can use the g file. The question is if I have a weakness on f3 and h2, can he take advantage of this uh, weakness that I'm having? If he cannot, then I'm going to allow the doubling of pawns on the f3 mm -hmm. because I can utilize the, the g file, especially my bishop is here. Mm -hmm. b6 is already a, a form of weakness. Once I can play rook g2, rook to g1, force him to play g6, that g6 is a good target, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, see, that, that's yeah. logical planning, understanding what's happening and making plans. Right. Okay, so bishop e3 and then h6 preventing any pin and that h6 move is a mistake for me why first of all it doesn't develop any piece if white will play bishop g5 he had uh, played it a while ago right but he didn't play it meaning he, he doesn't want to play bishop g5 right anymore. yeah but the idea of that one is to maybe play the queen to e7 understand because if queen e7 there might be bishop g5 and knight e5 idea yeah that's my understanding. So meaning he's gonna play rook e8 and queen e7. That is the setup of black. Now what about white? What is your setup? Well, you have to overprotect the center, meaning that the two pawns in the middle. First one, you play queen d3, overprotecting e4, rook e8, then now knight d2. Again, overprotecting the, the pawn on e4. If you plays d5, just move your pawn to e5, attacking the knight. And is the guy idea is white gonna play f3? Uh, maybe f3, right? Yeah. But if you can play f4 with gain of tempo or time, f4, f5, blocking this bishop and play h3, trapping the bishop, that might be also a good idea. It depends on the situation. If you need to play f3, for me, f3 is a bit passive, okay? If you want to play an attacking move using the pawn on the, the f2, you can play f4. So queen e7, that's what I told you, right? He wants to play this. That's why he played h6. Now, what's the next move for white? Let's see your piece play. And your ability to analyze when you're about when you're, what to do with your worst pieces. So center, <clears throat> uh, development, worst pieces, and then how to use your pawns. On power in chess. Honestly, I'd probably. Yeah. I'd probably play f3 and then knight c4, maybe. Okay. So there's a, a principle that says if you have to choose between a pawn move and a piece move, which one will you choose? Usually piece pawn, move because pawn moves yeah, can't be taken move, right? backwards. Yeah. Pawn moves yeah. will weaken squares. Pawn moves are not flexible, right? Yeah. So which piece? Which piece is useless or not developed? A1 rook. 
Okay, you're, you're having a problem with the E4 pawn? What will you play? Mm, maybe rook E1? A2 yeah. E1? Rook A E1, good plan. See this logical understanding. <laughs> okay. So what's and wrong with like, uh, grabbing the bishop pair after you know yeah. f three and knight c four? Uh, that, that's okay, right? But why move? Why why take the, the bishop right? Why play knight c four? You've been moving this knight many times. Mm. Why not use your your worst uh, pieces first? The bishop cannot run anywhere, right? You can play knight c four. If he plays a six, so what? It's it's not a developing move. Hmm. Okay. If he plays a6, then you can play f4, right? f4. Just, just play in the center. That is uh, where your strength is. The center. Okay? Yeah. So, if black played the rook a d8, meaning he's not scared of losing the bishop pair. White plays the move a3. is preventing any knight here. Maybe some ideas like bishop c2 and some ideas like this. And then maybe checkmate there on h7. So, just preserving uh, threats like this. And also removing any threats from your opponent's pieces. Maybe knight a5, something like this. Okay, so here, queen e, uh, queen to f8. Then white plays the move f4. Building three pawns in the middle. And then these pawns cannot be destroyed easily, cannot be broken by a pawn move. Because it's supposed to be the d5 push, right? Has to be played. Now it's useless because d5, you just play e5, right? Yeah. You can even take and then play bishop takes d5. It's still good for white. Okay. So I think black is preparing for the d5 push. Yeah. Oh, bishop c8. Why? Oh, because there's an f5 move, right? Yeah. It traps the f5, h3, and then g4. That's why the bishop move away. What will you play here if you're white? So your pieces are in the center. Now usually if my pieces are very active, I'm going to look for uh, what you call this tactical play. Checks, captures, and uh, threats. So like, can I play d5? Why, why would I play d5? My bishop is spinning the pawn. It puts pressure on the king, right? And d5 is a good square for my knight or maybe my bishop later. So I will not play d5. What about e5? e5, my, my queen is in front of this. So I cannot uh, really play the move e5. There's a pin on my d4 pawn. So what should I play? What is black's last move all about to save this? Is bishop? Mm, yeah. The square g4 is... Now vacant, so a... yeah, maybe h3. So the knight yeah, g4 doesn't happen. He wants to play knight g4, knight takes, and then bishop takes pawn. Or he can... I was yeah. going to say, he can also consider maybe king h1. Uh, okay, king h1 is also okay without weakening your your squares on the king side, right? Yeah. But here, white played the move h3. It's also kind of a waiting move. Just in case there will be attack on your king, you can move your king to h, h2. Understand? Gotcha. But the problem is it weakens the g3 square. But this knight cannot just go to, to g4. I mean, to h5 to play knight g3. You can just play maybe king h2 and then chase the knight with g4 again, right? Mm, yeah. I think the knight on the side is also not good. So black played here, king h8. He's playing a waiting move. Uh, maybe he's going to use this pawn. Okay, he's going to move the knight to e7, right? Mm -hmm. And then the knight goes to g8, then maybe d5. is preparing for this break. Mm -hmm. g4 now, knight e7. So that's uh, so what I have uh, anticipated. King h1 and then d5. But this d5 move is just too late. It will not affect white's advantage here. What will you play if you're white? Well, taking will just uh, lead to exchanges in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. And black is having a crumb game. What, why would you exchange? Just move up the pawn. Yeah. Ba basic understanding. And here, move up the pawn. The pawn power, right? Yeah. It's the power of pawns. It can cramp uh, opponent's pieces if they're not helped by the pawns this pawn move really is just too late okay mm -hmm. because it was just uh, answered by e5 it's so hard not to find counterplay f6 e6 
luck is losing. Right? Mm-hmm. Do you know that luck is losing here? Yeah, I can see that clearly, yes. <laughs> no play for his pieces. Right. Okay? Yeah. He thinks, okay, now it's important that you also know what prophylactic thinking. What is the idea of your opponent? You know, I, I'm always asking my you know my myself. Whenever my opponent plays a pawn or a, a piece move that might be some threatening move, I'm going to examine the combinations that he's making. C6 has no combination. It protects D5, meaning the knight will move somewhere. And it frees the C7 square, meaning he's going to improve this one. My king is a bit weak here, right? Yes. Okay, what will I play? Very easy. Take away the ideas of your opponent. Because if your opponent has no good moves to play, then you will have a problem what to play, right? Right. Okay, so take away good moves. Knight G8, Knight A4, Bishop here, and then Bishop C2 intending to play B4. Okay, queen e7. Why? Uh, he... Hmm. He's having a cramp game. What do you usually do when you're having a cramp game? When you're you try to exchange <laughs> exchange pieces. He wants to play bishop c7. <laughs> okay, he wants to play bishop c7. Take away opponent's good moves. Yeah. Okay, so so I'll play uh, uh, um, queen g3. Okay, very good. <laughs> you know, these are not the, what you call tactical ideas. It's just positional ideas, right? Yeah. But it's really hurting luck because he has no good moves to play right right if he plays here you play h4 yes Chase the knight of... <laughs> wrist rooks are inactive the bishop the only way for black to really proceed is to make plays on the queen that's the meaning make... yeah but which pawn break <sighs> if he play b6 then i'm going to play b4 right right this knight is about to go to c5 so it is this is really not good for black yeah. He has no. Play. When you have no play, you're losing. B4, knight h uh, to f8, then a4, a5. Now, black has uh, found a chance to make a break. But do you know that this is also a losing move? The a5. White pieces on the queen side, three of them, right? Mm. Look at this. Three pieces on the queen side, bishop, and then one's lines are, are open here. The rooks are very mobile. They can just go to the queen side without problems. Whereas black has a problem with the bishop, right? Yeah. Move. So meaning opening the queen side like this is just helping white's attack uh, becoming stronger. Mm, okay? Yeah. So knight b3, capture an a4, knight takes a5, bishop takes, knight takes c6, and the rest is easy. White uh, lost the queen or sacrificed the queen. Maybe he was tired of prolong prolonging this losing game or lost game. So he gave up the queen. Anyway, he has no play. You have any question? No. Pretty straightforward it's, case it's of... All because of this? Uh, pawns, right? Space, right? The pawns. Yeah, the pawns in the middle. Yeah. Overprotection. See, if you have pawns in the middle, you overprotect them. Don't push any of the spawn forward unless you're forced. Okay? Mm -hmm. okay. Maintain. Maintain the position of your pawns. And then develop, concentrate on developing your pieces, especially the worst pieces. Rook A, E1 is a very good move. All right? Centralization yeah. of the pieces. Do you have any question? No questions. No. I got it. No payment for the day. This is, this is just a free lesson. But this is how I'm teaching my students. Strategy, strategy. Um... Teaching you how to make plans, how to anticipate plans of your opponent, mm. uh, prophylactic thinking, and so on. Got okay. It. Yep. See you. All right, my friend. So we... next week, when you want to meet same, on, same same time or Monday. Monday is good for you, right? We did. We decided on Monday is at ten p.m. Central. Yeah, ten p.m. That is agreed. Okay, See perfect. Then, I'll be there. I'll be there on time. Bye. All right. Thank you, Coach Le uh, Levy. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.